Sebastian, thank you for, for TSC for inviting that link. I'm, I'm very glad to be with you online today and be given the, the floor for, for this interesting topic. I'm in charge of, of environment at GetLink, and, and uh, as a member of uh, the CSR team, uh, I think it's very exciting to see how the, the corporate responsibility has become a growing interest recently for shareholders and basically for all types of investors. This is uh, evident globally. Uh, for example, if we, if we look at the importance of related issues during the General Assembly, um, but it's also something that we, we live uh, day to day uh, at GetLink. And, Basically, I, I'm alive in proof of this because, as a quick anecdote, in, in the past years, it says yes, there was uh, one slide in the year end results presentation, hardly covered. And now uh, there is very a lot more interest in it. Uh, we join many QA sessions, and I will attend the, the investor roadshow coming year since investors, shareholders are, are very getting more professionalized on, on this question and expectation. Um, before going to further details on this topic, let me give you a couple of words about GitLink businesses and our uh, uh, CSR, um, CSR perspective for the one who, who don't know very us, uh, who don't know all, uh, us very well. Uh, I try just to, to change the slide. Yes, okay, I think it works now. Um, so GitLink is um, a private-owned company, a uh, major player in the European transport, with three main businesses, Eurotunnel, concessionaire of the cross-channel fixed link, uh, with four flows, you know, shuttle passenger, shuttle for freight, Eurostar, and, and then freight trains. Also have Eurocourt, a, a rail freight operator with a market share of 5 to 6% in France, and a new project, um, a new business going live next year, which is a, a power interconnector for electricity between UK and, and Europe with uh, 8, uh, 20 billion euro revenues strongly impacted by both crisis, COVID and Brexit, of course, compared to 2019 and a market capitalization uh, above 7 uh, million euro. For us, the, the CSR is really seen as a source of uh, value creation and, and, uh, and dynamics for all the stakeholders. We have basically uh, based it uh, on five uh, pillars, sustainable relations with customer and suppliers, environment, uh, communities and local development, social and, and, and governance. And if, um, and if we go, let's say, uh, have a quick insight on how we address CSR with an example of environment uh, I'm in charge of, um, we, we have defined a plan, a short-term plan by uh, 2025, um, based on three axes, very, very usual one, climate and, and energy, um, biodiversity and natural environment, and waste management. We started from, uh, let's say, track records, fact we are uh, proud of on, on the recent years, with uh, low emissions, 2 million tons avoided, and a good carbon performance compared to alternative. We have set ambitious uh, commitments for scope one, uh, two, and three, and it's really backed up by a realistic and detailed, detailed action plan. So this is the way we, we, we address it for, for, for the environment. But, the, the sauce, so sorry yes. to interrupt you. Can you put your presentation in full screen maybe because we, we see the... Yes, I thought it was the case. Let me... Um... Is it better like this? Yes, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, so more, more widely um, talk about environment, but globally, I think CSR is not um, it's a straightforward topic. When, when it comes to shareholders, uh, transparency and dialogue are key, of course, to confirm that they are aware of the challenges and consequences of CSR ambition, commitments, and, and then achievement. So I propose now to share with you maybe three main challenges we are facing in this context, and also the conviction we have tried to build uh, on this. The first one is, is the fact that definitely we are still struggling to build a, a relevant perception of our actual ESG impact. We are like, a, like in a jungle of, of all rating agencies, labor standards, comparing very different sectors, very different countries. There is no standards in place, no IFRS-like uh, ESG standards. 
shareholders have also their, their own assessment sometimes to, to, to assess our, our performance. And it brings um, some confusion, let's say, and, and could also lead to an absurd situation. The real life uh, example of this absurdity, MSCI, you know, the, the label of the rating agency, downgraded us a couple of years ago because of lack of information about how we treat indigenous population concerned by our infrastructure. So I would be very happy to explain to my colleague in Calais that they are indigenous population, but it, it shows that it's very difficult to compare, uh, uh, let's say, a new power plant in China with a 30-year-old uh, infrastructure in France. And despite our discussion and meetings, it's not what to, to change methodology. Uh, other example, um, in the reporting, we bring some um, information about absolute water consumption, absolute water, so, 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 so what? The trivial study, very little interest is put about absolute existing emission. The reduction train for CO2 emission care, of course, but the absolute emission value doesn't care. For us, getting is, is very uh, low rated at CDP, uh, graded D, despite our electric powertrain. But to be positive in this respect, I think we can um, expect from the European taxonomy, the recent one, to bring more quality in, 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 in which players' activities are really in line with a collective sustainable vision. Second point, second, uh, and a very key decision to take uh, is whether to act now, modest, or to promise very high, but later. So in other words, about short and long-term objectives. We are convinced that it's very key to have an ambitious plan, science-based target validated, but realistic, back up by a very detailed plan, a short-term plan, robust one. This is the case for us by 2025, with commitments corresponding to the life of the mandate of this executive and not pushing the responsibility you know, to other um, executive in, in five, 10, or, or 20 years from now. So in other words, the commitments to net zero 2050 cannot be the alpha and omega of the climate strategy at, at the company scale. Uh, of course, for us, it could be very easy to buy a choice. Uh, net zero is maybe a couple of hundreds of thousand euros, and the marketing touchline is here. But I think this is really a, a matter of where you want to invest. And I can tell you that people on the ground who never advocate for us uh, to, to, to expense money like this, but would prefer, let's say, focusing on, for instance, uh, um, fighting against flooding, for instance, if, if we keep in the climate rate. Let, let, let us be clear, though, uh, our current action plan, uh, even for 2025, we continue to deliver results beyond, and I think rolling commitments will make sure the discipline and efforts will continue. To be also prepared for long term, I think our other conviction, conviction here is really that it's necessary to have a look on the role system in which we play. So thinking of what we call, call the global carbon shadow and not only carbon footprint. It's about avoided emission by our businesses. It's about embarking the world supply chain in our trajectory. Maybe this is a topic we can could address during the q later. And the last topic for us, I think the main message I wanted to invite this morning and um, I won't tell you a story here uh, for us. ESG performance and especially decarbonization is a cost, and is a cost with no quick return on investment. Uh, let us think about additional costs for biofuels. Let us think about acquisition of new engines. When talking about rail freight, uh, this cost cannot be balanced um, unless the customer is ready for price top up, which is not the case for B2B or that the tax context evolves strongly. We have here some hope with the European um, energy taxation update, and of course, a CO2 harmonized price we strongly promote. So as a conclusion, I think this is perhaps a, the prerequisite for having a, a committed shareholder that we must assume that this transition is a matter of trade-off and that we have to work hard to make this trade-off very explicit Back up by its scenarios, calculation throughout the world governance of the company with a share, a clear share of responsibility, and back up with a couple of tools we could probably also address later. Thank you very much.
Thanks a lot, Vincent, for uh, for this very very interesting uh, presentation. Let's uh, let's move directly to the to the next uh, speaker, uh, Clémence Moulot from um, Edmond de Rothschild Asset Management. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Sylvester. Uh, I've been an RI analyst uh, for seven years at Edmond de Rothschild and um, in the RI field for uh, 15 years. Um, I'm very glad to talk about shareholder engagement as it is at the heart of our RI policy. Indeed, we think that... Uh, a constructive dialogue with companies at senior level is the best way to promote uh, ESG best practices and to help companies to, to transform their business model into more sustainability. So last year, we um, really updated our policy uh, on engagement to be more effective uh, on three axes, uh, governance, scope, and uh, goals. So on governance, uh, at, uh, before, uh, as a lot of asset manager uh, engagement was in the end of the RI team and the asset managers uh, of the fund concerned, and we wanted to make it more transverse. And um, so we invited more team in our uh, steering committee, like uh, marketing, communication, or uh, compliance, of course. And uh, this committee is now chaired by our CIO. So all engagement actions are backed and validated by uh, the direction. The steering committee validates all new action and follow ongoing uh, actions. Um, and uh, it's uh, really more formalized. On scope, um, you, maybe you know that uh, we had uh, at Edmond Rothschild uh, a flagship fund, uh, Tricolor Rendement, which had the engagement label uh, in 2009, so when it existed. Uh, so we have a long experience of engage, engaging with French companies, but we wanted to have a more broader coverage. So now we can have a specific engagement on uh, non-listed equities or maybe on uh, non-European companies. And uh, on uh, goals, um, we, when we start an engagement action, we really um, have uh, the goal we want to achieve uh, with a very precise timetable. So it can be a um, short-term goal uh, like ESG transparency, a medium goal uh, which will be uh, ESG uh, trans uh, operational performance, or a longer goal, which will be a, a more ESG strategy. Uh, all in all, uh, we think that engagement will reduce uh, the risk of the company, so it will increase the ESG performance and the, the financial performance, of course. Concretely, we can have individual or collective en engagement. Individual is more with the French companies because we know very well the management. And, um, so for instance, we had a lot of meetings with Saint-Gobain and we formalized our um, points in a letter to um, show the points we thought were weaknesses for the group and uh, had a bad impact on valuation. And we were very happy to see that uh, this year, the group um, put in place some measures that went in the good sense for us, like uh, the separation of function of CEO and chairman or a more uh, diverse uh, executive and board. On a collective uh, engagement, we, we had a long tradition of uh, dialogue with uh, the French oil and gas uh, company Total. Uh, we tried to file a resolution in 2011 on TARSENS. Um, we continue since uh, our engagement with them, uh, specifically this last two years on climate. And to be more effective, we joined uh, 10 other investors and filed a resolution at uh, 2020 AGM to ask for more transparency on their climate uh, strategy and uh, more global and uh, uh, precise goals on, uh, on CO2. The resolution had the support of 17% of shareholders and most of all, uh, 
Total uh, continuously uh, improves its strategy on the climate. So we thought it was a very uh, successful engagement, even if, of course, it's not finished. And uh, sometimes we joined specific initiatives to address more specific issues or to have uh, an expert view. So, for instance, um, we joined the nursing home statement coordinated by Uni Global Union. And uh, so they ask uh, the nursing companies to set standards on uh, social dialogue, wages, quality of care, uh, as we saw that this sector was uh, critical in, in today's life. We also joined um, Access to Medicine Initiative. Uh, they encourage pharmaceutical companies to systematically improve access to medicine in uh, emerging countries and for neglected is, uh, disease. So to conclude, um, I would say we always try to be the more effective with our, our time, as engagement takes a lot of time, um, and to have the much impact as possible. And we now need to improve our reporting uh, because we know we as um, asset managers, we have to be accountable and to be uh, transparent as we as companies to be more transparent, we have to be too. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Clemence, for this uh, very interesting uh, uh, insights. Um, let's uh, proceed with uh, Guillaume Lasser, who is uh, Deputy CIO at uh, La Banque Postale Asset Management. Guillaume. Thanks, thank, thanks a lot, Sébastien. I will try to... Uh, I, I said that I didn't have any slide, but in fact, at the end, I have some. So just to give a bit of, cons of, uh, of context. Uh, so let me try to do that. Uh, yes. If it works, yeah. Yes, perfect. Yeah, you can put in full screen. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, is it okay? Yes, great. Uh, no, and last thing is to do this. Should be okay, right? No, actually, I, I think it oh, was it, better before. Better okay. before. Yeah. This is this is better, right? Yes, that's perfect. Thanks. Okay, thanks a lot. So yeah, I just want to uh, I won't talk a, a lot about the uh, postal asset management, but I think it's important to uh, to to give you a bit of con of context of what we've done, and uh, I will try to relay that to uh, the previous uh, speech we had uh, uh, from uh, Augustin. Uh, I will make an effort to to link the two uh, purposes. So in terms of context. Um, Donc, so, la, la Banque Postale Asset Management is, uh, is one of the pioneers in, uh, in the SRI field. Uh, what, what was important for us a uh, few years ago is what it was to uh, assess uh, philosophy and, uh, and tools in order to uh, apply this philosophy. So, what we, we decided to do is uh, to uh, define uh, what was important as an, as an investor in terms of extra financial matters and uh, maybe our small difference between with other people or other companies was that we decided not to have only three pillars, E, S, and G, but uh, a third one, which is uh, essentially uh, uh, territories, thanks to our, um, uh, uh, thanks to La Poste, because it's a theme which is very important here in France for La Poste. So we, we, we had territories, so it, it, it ended up with a, this acronym, which is great. Uh, but it was very important at the beginning, like to uh, assess from, a, let's say, a philosophical point of view, what was important at every level in the company in terms of extra financial data. Once we have done that, the first thing we've done is focuses on capital allocation. So related to what uh, to, to 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 the paper of uh, of uh, Augustin, meaning that how do we manage to incorporate this uh, uh, this philosophy within uh, uh, our uh, funds? So mainly capital allocation. We decided to be a, what we call a one hundred percent French SRI label, and this is really coherent with what I said because uh, the SRI label is essentially a way to give some process in order to integrate uh, ESG purposes within uh, uh, standard allocation, uh, 
with, with, with a, a fun offering. Let's put it that way. Uh, once we've done that, uh, the next step for us is, uh, is the third part, the part on the right, the, the right part of the slide, sorry, is to, to go one step beyond, and which is mainly uh, enhance uh, the, uh, our engagement policy. This, we are not doing, we are doing something in, in this, and we were with uh, Edmond Rochil Asset Management on this famous uh, uh, shareholder resolution uh, last year. But uh, what we want to do is to um, use uh, a sh uh, shareholder dialogue and engagement as a true, uh, 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 as a true uh, mean. Uh, to uh, our uh, own uh, ESG or let's say ESG policy. And I will, uh, 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 I will give you some details on that. So that's why it's very important for us to assess this. So this is just uh, what is important for us on, on this slide. So it's mainly uh, responsible governance is uh, that's the, the, fam the famous G, uh, sustainable management of resources is to be linked to uh, social impact energy transition, I won't, I won't comment. And what is specific to us is a local territories development. When you want to do capital allocation, most of the time uh, you need uh, to have uh, your proper analysis on uh, those uh, thematics, on, on those themes. And uh, one way to do it is obviously to collect data in order to compare uh, companies, uh, so to score them and et cetera, et cetera. So this is, uh, um, a common way to assess uh, part of the uh, uh, SRI uh, objective you can put in place. But most of the time, and I'm, I won't uh, surprise uh, the other audience, but the fact that uh, you might have uh, some lack of data on some of the themes. And clearly, uh, engagement, uh, not engagement, but shareholder dialogue, uh, is a way for us uh, to assess part of those themes. The local territory development, for example, is something which is not really addressed by a uh, uh, data provider. So uh, this is a way for us, uh, engagement and shareholder dialogue is, is a way for us to learn uh, from the companies, from the issuers, uh, what we want to know uh, directly and not through uh, collecting uh, data. But the real issue for us is that, so what, what I said, we have four pillars. So this is the kind of philosophy we want, or let's say the, the, what is important for us when we try to assess extra financial data uh, matters for, for a company. But on, on the bottom part of the slide, you have the, the real mean uh, as an investor you have into your hands. And that, this is why we, I, I will uh, uh, comment uh, the, 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 the presentation of uh, Augustin is, uh, most of the time, we focus on uh, August and Paper was focusing essentially on the uh, left part of the slide. So it's capital allocation. So exclusion, this is the, uh, the example you gave when you just focus on one company. So because you, uh, you said that the, one, the other one is not, is not complying with what you think. So you just forget about it, forget about it. And ESG integration is just standard uh, capital allocation. So how do you incorporate uh, data, extra financial data within your capital allocation. So this uh, is uh, this is a, a real way to uh, to uh, to have a, I think a coherent uh, framework uh, to make a, a social responsible investment. But as Augustin said, when you are a, a small big S, so I now I know that I'm a small big S. So I have a, not a large part of capital as a, as a, as a sustainable fund, a large part of capital uh, to, to put in the, in the market. Um, the question uh, we have to ask ourselves is, uh, is it meaningful? Uh, do we have a real impact on uh, those companies? And what is very surprising is the fact that probably that engagement, even if you are a small investor, engagement is a real mean to change things. When, you, when we talk about uh, listed companies, at least. And, and, and the example gave by, uh, given by, uh, uh, by, by Clemence, 
that's why. Yeah, but, but, but Clemence is, is the good one. I mean, with only uh, a few parts of the capital, uh, we uh, succeeded to change a bit the trajectory of one of the major companies within the oil and gas sector. And, and this is because we were in a position to discuss because we were just uh, shareholders. And so what is important is how to use that in an industrial way. Because this dialogue, when you, when you start to dialogue with those people, uh, you have to be at their level. So you have to understand, truly understand what they are doing. So it's a lot of work, a lot of work. And as you might know, when you are an investment company, uh, one of the things you're trying to do is to diversify your, your, your investment. So you end up, if you want to industrialize that, you have to engage at least 500 companies. And this is not possible. So the real issue we have, at least at La Banque Postal Asset Management, is to have a, a, a shareholder dialogue and an engagement policy, which could be applied to this large amount of uh, company. And today we haven't, haven't solved these issues because uh, uh, there is too much work to do. And one of, uh, one of the consequences of that is uh, that we have to focus on large positions. And most of the time, large positions are uh, large capitalizations. And my, my, my personal concern is that we will create a discrepancy on the, on the market between uh, large capitalization and small ones, meaning that uh, we will engage in a dialogue with the uh, big companies and we will give an edge to those companies. And, and we will uh, we will let we, we it's not it's not obvious that what we are doing at their level will be a spread to uh, smaller companies we are also an investor into small small cap uh, companies and we we see a, a real difference in the approach and not only because uh, they are not able to uh, have large teams to to manage uh, csr policy and so on but also because they are, they don't spend a lot of time on this subject because investors are not uh, talking to them. So, and this is one of the 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 the, the, the concern I have uh, concerning engagement, and it, it is mainly a, a problem of uh, resources on our side. And uh, maybe a, 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 a third point of uh, which is important on engagement, and but I I, I already talk about it is. Uh, it's a way, it's not engagement, it's more shareholder dialogue. It's a way to, to talk about uh, themes which are not covered by data. And I have three in mind where it's very difficult to have a, a coherent data across the board. So in order to compare companies, it's biodiversity, uh, human rights, and um, net zero trajectories. We, most of the time we have, we can collect data about the current situation of the company. But what we saw, it's very important to understand what the company will do in the coming uh, decades. And this kind of data is quite hard to find. So, I, and I will stop there. Thank you very much, Guillaume, for, uh, for, for this uh, very uh, enlightening uh, uh, talk. And, and thanks for raising uh, some of the issues that you are facing. We can, we can discuss about that uh, in, the, in the general discussion. Um, now we'd like to give the floor to uh, Nathalie Thiolet, who is uh, Managing Director at uh, Impact Finance. Thank you, Augustin, and thank you to Catherine. And Sebastian, well. sorry. Uh, sorry for <laughs> thank you, Sebastian, no and thank you, Catherine, uh, for inviting us. So uh, uh, I will quickly introduce uh, Impact. So Impact is the first impact rating agency. We used to say that we are a second generation rating agency. Um, you know um, that the rating today is completely focused on ESG, which is uh, the mitigation of negative impact, while impact is going uh, beyond ESG uh, to measure a positive impact of any type of organization, either listed or private, uh, small cap or large cap. So uh, we are a B Corp. That means that we are also walking the talk. So we apply to ourselves what we uh, expect from uh, the issuer we are waiting. Uh, we are uh, investor based, meaning that we are only serve investor, uh, bank and asset manager. 
So we don't have any contact with issuer to avoid conflict of interest. So um, what we are doing is that we are taking a holistic view uh, of both positive and negative impacts uh, of uh, any type of organization. We focus on outcome, uh, meaning that we are going to the results of activity mitigation versus a focus on effort, which is what ESG is looking for. Uh, we are applying double materiality uh, versus the single financial materiality applied by ESG. Uh, we use uh, the international standard framework of IMP, which have been blessed by France recently um, in uh, Finance for Tomorrow, uh, which uh, decide to join the IMP uh, standard. Uh, we have um, a, a, a transparent methodology which is uh, fully open source because the impact management project where our um, methodology is inspired um, is uh, fully available uh, to any type of um, visitor, um, which is not the case for ESG uh, rater, which are uh, most of the time in-house methodology, very short and non-transparent. So uh, consider as a black box today by investor. So the challenge we are facing today is uh, the data availability. Uh, we, we need some more data. Today, we consider that we are missing 10% of data for European uh, issuer, uh, while it's more uh, important for US issuer because they don't have the regulatory constraints. Uh, we are confident with the CSRD that we can improve the quality of data uh, uh, very soon. Uh, because it will be more standardized. Today, what we are collecting is uh, data that need to be uh, contextualized against um, international um, uh, sectorial uh, standard. This is what we are doing, and this is what is taking a lot of time, because the data uh, need to be uh, uh, controlled and verified before it is used in our uh, score. So um, we have a score on 1,000 points, which is built by using uh, 1,300 data points. Uh, so a lot of work. Uh, for example, and to come back on uh, GetLink, uh, we have rated GetLink, and they have obtained 310 points, which is very good rate uh, compared to the CAC 40, which is today uh, 220. What we are viewing every day is that uh, we are facing an economy which is in transition, meaning that uh, the importance of the scoring is to uh, be able to evaluate the progression of uh, the issuer uh, and the way he's improving his rating. So comparability is core uh, for investors because they need to have this comparability by using an international standard, which is exactly what we provide them with. So the other um, challenge we are facing is uh, the lack of knowledge of um, asset manager around impact, meaning that even if they have access to our data, we are providing them with training on how to use it because it's a complex uh, uh, topics and uh, they, they need to be trained on, on that. So, so this is uh, one of the challenge we are facing is that if we want to move to uh, uh, an impact uh, economy, uh, we also need to train professional around that and investor. Um, the uh, importance of uh, SDG integration uh, is key. Um, SDG is a common language uh, for um, the measure of impact. So what we have built is that we are mapping uh, SDG um, uh, through the issuer activities, which is the basis to be able to evaluate uh, the impact of the issuer. We are rating a company on a yearly basis um, using uh, uh, both the financial and extra financial data. And we are, uh, when there is a, a controversy uh, during the year, which can affect uh, the materiality uh, of the impact, uh, we are rating, uh, we, we are uh, conducting a new rating of the issuer. Um, we have um, uh, built uh, two types of product. One is the SDG mapping of issuer, and the second is 
uh, an impact assessment, which is built like you know, uh, financial uh, statements, meaning that we are able to uh, quantify uh, both the negative and the positive impact. So we have recently uh, conducted an interesting webinar with Augustin Landier and uh, some teacher of uh, Harvard University on the performance of the impact. And uh, we have been able to build a case study uh, with uh, a partnership of uh, Natixis around uh, which name is In Search of Impact Alpha, where we have been able to demonstrate um, how uh, the, the performance of the impact is correlated to the financial performance, which is uh, really a good news because that means that for uh, the investor, whether it is an asset manager or a trader, uh, when they invest in an uh, impact company, they can ensure that they will have a long-term performance because the impact uh, issuer is very resilient. We have seen that in the recent crisis, uh, the resilience of uh, ESG uh, uh, issuer um, has been uh, demonstrated. So, so this is something very interesting for um, uh, banks and asset manager, and also for investors, which are very uh, a lot uh, attracted by the thematic of uh, the SDG. So uh, this is pretty much what we are doing today. We are working. Uh, uh, we, we have a presence in Europe uh, through our Paris office and uh, our headquarters, which is in Montreal, uh, Canada which is a, a perfect uh, uh, place for us to um, uh, conduct both um, uh, an expansion in the US and in Europe. Uh, we have started by um, Europe because it's the most advanced in terms of regulation, but we are seeing uh, things moving fast in the US. Uh, we are working with, for example, Franklin Templeton uh, in the US where we have uh, rated all their uh, private equity funds uh, which are uh, uh, impact oriented. And we have a partnership also with Societe Generale in France where we have rated all their uh, credit portfolio. It, do you have any question? I Thank think you very much. Th th thanks a lot, Nathalie. Uh, uh, I, I, I sent on the chat the, the case study that you mentioned. Uh, Thank can, you, can Sebastian. Someone, can someone confirm that it is there? Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much, Nathalie, for, for this uh, very interesting presentation of your uh, of your activities. And I think it relates well to the presentation of Augustin, as you mentioned, and also to the presentations of, of the other panelists. Uh, now, I, I would like to open the floor for questions. So if you have questions for Nathalie uh, or, or for uh, the uh, other panelists, Vincent, Clémence and Guillaume, uh, please feel free to, um, to, to step in. Or to send uh, your question on uh, on um, on the chat. Yeah, Sophie. Yes, uh, thank you very much. So I have a question for actually a few of you. Uh, that would be um, how do you weight uh, the importance of the different uh, items uh, when you are trying to assess uh, impact? I mean, social governance, or and even within the items. Uh, so I will take it. So yes, uh, wh what we have is that we have a methodology, which is a 60-page document where we can detail all what we are doing and uh, related to uh, um, the, 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 the way we are weighting uh, the three topics, which is E, S, and G. So uh, we are mainly uh, putting uh, um, the same uh, um, weight on um, E and S, and for G, uh, it's a little bit uh, smaller, uh, but this is the approach we have taken and we are completely transparent about it uh, on our methodology and the way we are rating uh, the issuer. So when the issuer receive um, the, uh, the, the rating, they are able to uh, uh, clearly identify uh, the granularity of uh, uh, of the three topics. Uh, and this is something that can help them to adjust their strategy. Thank you very much, Nathalie. Uh, do, do the asset managers that, uh, that who we have the chance to, uh, to, to have here, so Guillaume and, and, and Clemence, do you have an, uh, an opinion about the, the value, the, the ways you, you, you weight the, the different uh, topics in the ESG uh, um, uh, world? 
Do, do you have an issue with that, or do you have anything uh, to to uh, to comment on? Clemence, do you want to start? Or... Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, we also have an internal methodology with a proprietary model, and um, we weight um, the three pillars according to the sector and the specificity of the companies, and inside each pillar, uh, all criteria are weighted according to the, you know, the materiality of the criteria and the impact the, the company can have or on the impact uh, the criteria we assess can have on the company. Uh, like uh, climate change can have an impact on the company and the company can have an impact on the climate change. So the criteria are really weighted uh, according to each sector and inside the sector to the specificity of the companies. Yeah. Yeah. A few comments on my side. Uh, this is a real question, and uh, and and this is a secret a secret sauce. So I won't I won't comment. No, no, <laughs> no, no. But the, the, this is very important, and for us, we we it, it depends uh, it depends on where you are uh, within the investment process. So when we talk about scoring, so scoring is so, some kind of a general assessment, uh, as I showed you. So we have not three pillar, but four pillar with the a pillar which is, which is something else territories don't so just by doing by, by doing simple math you, you you can see that the importance of the other one are probably uh, lower that uh, from uh, our friends our, our the other asset management companies so and uh, mainly that's true that when you look at our global assessment of a company we are we, we can say that we are short uh, carbon for example the, the importance of uh, the uh, energy transition and the carbon in the global assessment is less important than the for other people. But when it comes to uh, ESG integration, so when you have to choose to allocate capital, it's more linked to what just Clement said, that depending on materiality, depending on the sector, the weights will be different uh, at the investment level. So two level for scoring, so global assessment of a company, we, 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 we are, let's say, equi equally uh, weighted, not, even if it's not really true, but uh, as a first approximation. And when it comes to uh, investment, al capital allocation, uh, you can focus on one or two dimensions instead of uh, taking the fourth uh, dimension, the four dimension we have. Great, thank you very much uh, to uh, all of you for, uh, for, these, uh, for these insights. Um, uh, Catherine, you, you had uh, you had a question. Yes, I, I wanted to to go back on the um, uh, on, on the engagement and and how um, how fund fund managers set goals with companies. So I heard Vincent saying that for Gatling, the issue was okay. Should we be uh, modest but quick, or should we be more long term and 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 aim high? And uh, I heard Clemence saying that, okay, we try to in the short, run, sh short term to improve transparency. And I would like to know what are the, you know, how do you stand for that? Do you, do you, do you plan to set quite ambitious goals um, with companies you're engaged uh, with? And if you do, do you commit to such goals and performance vis-a-vis -vis your own investors um, as well? Okay, so yeah, I guess it's again a question for our asset managers on the on the panel. Well, and maybe also on the company side, just to see yeah. their experience. Maybe, maybe I go first this time. Uh, we launch the, the debate because there is a debate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, for us uh, engagement is uh, meaningful when you are able to measure it. And uh, most of the time, uh, this is uh, this is very difficult. So the, the, the first thing we, we try to do is to uh, have uh, KPIs, and this is why I, I'm totally in line with Clemence. But we, when we ask first for transparency, because this is just a simple way to measure uh, our ambition. So, and we, what we have uh, have observed is when just talking to people and trying to uh, to converge on opinions is very difficult. So uh, measure is uh, very important. And that's why uh, on my side, I think that 
um, the engagement around climate are meaningful today because you can measure something and probably the other one which which is a quite uh, where we can be ambitious let's put it that way is uh, concerning human rights uh, we do not we do not have a, let's say a continuous measure of the performance of the company but using controversies and, and this kind of issues we can have an assessment or an objective assessment of uh, where the company is in terms of human rights so, so here are the two places where for us it's possible to be very ambitious from now for the other dimension as i said biodiversity we we ask for transparency because uh, we are not yet in capacity to measure uh, what uh, what company uh, what companies are doing thank you very much yeah clemens would you like to add something or Yes, uh, I, I completely agree. Uh, when we start an engagement, we have very precise uh, goals. I think they are all ambitious. Um, if we take the time to engage with the company, that's because we think uh, there is a point uh, which is important for us. But we defined uh, it can be a quantitative goal. Uh, so maybe a decrease in uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, so it's easy to, to measure afterwards. Uh, it can be very factual, like the separation of powers. And sometimes it's uh, effectively uh, more qualitative, like on the strategy. Do you think uh, uh, Total has a very climate strategy? Uh, it can be discussed, but at least we think we, we can uh, advance and uh, argument on that. Um, so even with qualitative, we try to, to measure it and... Uh, and set the goals, and if the goals is not achieved, we will take some measures. Mm, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I was wondering, Nathalie, uh, do, do you, um, uh, as as was indicated uh, by uh, by both uh, Clemence and uh, and uh, Guillaume, the measurement is important when you do an engagement because you would like to see what was the state of uh, the affairs before and then after the engagement. Uh, have you been talking with some investors uh, about uh, trying to uh, evaluate specifically their engagement policies? Uh, so, as mentioned, we are um, when we are um, uh, working with um, investors, uh, what they are looking for is to have a quantification of uh, the uh, the evolution. So, meaning we are looking for a baseline and target. Without a baseline and a target, we cannot. Uh, rate properly the issuer. So this is pretty much what we are facing today is a challenge to have uh, the disclosure, the complete disclosure of this type of information, which is the best way to measure uh, the engagement of, of the issuer. So, so this is uh, where we are today. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, uh, Vincent, did, did you, would you like to, to react on this question? Otherwise, I will give the floor to, to Olive. It's a Vincent. Yeah, maybe we just want uh, one comment about what Nathalie just said uh, about the baseline. I totally agree. Yeah, this is, uh, of course, uh, obvious baseline and target. Um, how is it possible to, to assess, to compare baseline among others uh, or, or be between them? Because sometimes, you know, I, I quoted the example of water consumption. I say, okay, the group uh, consumes, uh, let's say, 200 cubic meter water per year. Okay, is, is it uh, too much? So, is it um, strong impact, small impact? You see the point that the baseline yes. is sometimes complicated. Too. Yes, okay. so that's the reason why it's very important to have a sectorial approach to understand uh, what the competitor are doing, is the target uh, adopted is ambitious or not, and what are the means that the business model have, have put in place to reach this target. If the target is ambitious, but there is no means, for sure we will consider that in the, in the rating because we consider that in some way it's a greenwashing. Yeah. So, so that's the reason why, you know, we are using sectorial comparative uh, with the same size of, the, of market, same size of issuer uh, to assess uh, the uh, reality of the baseline and targets. Thank you very much, Nathalie, for this precision. Thanks, Vincent, for, uh, for your uh, for your insight. Uli, you want to raise a point? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, I have... Uh, 
a question on engagement, or better two questions on engagement. The first one, I come, want to come back to uh, Clemence, what you said uh, in the introductory statement, when you basically emphasize both transparency and engagement. Now, the two don't necessarily go together very well. Right? Sometimes when you have engagement with companies, you find that sort of like silent engagement, uh, like the discrete approach might be more constructive. And I'm thinking the ESG area, when it's really about complex decisions, right? sort of like when it's not trivial what the company has to do, but sort of like it might not be the best approach just to write a public letter to the company and say, so you have, or go in with the GoPro on your head, but rather you want to basically also have them a way to respond and find a solution together with them. So the question is, and that's a question both to, to, to the asset managers and, and, and also to Nathalie, but so I, and also to Vasson, who is on the receiving end. So like, what is your view on that? Right? Is there, what's the value of being fully transparent in that you engage that company and what the reivindications are or whether you can also have value in, in a discrete approach? Second question is about uh, the interplay with activists. Uh, and I have in particular in mind activists that are not, you know, the, the, um, those with a, the, the, the green activists that are like, like coming from the, from the content side, but maybe hedge funds, right? Hedge funds that have uh, sometimes a green agenda that are temporary investors, unlike the traditional institutional investors that, that you as asset managers are or others are. Uh, do you think that in engagement they can play a constructive role? Uh, or do you think they're more negatively? Again, it's a question both to the asset managers and to myself for the corporate side. Thank you. Thanks, Suli. Yeah. So, uh, so maybe let, let me organize it a bit. Let, let's start with the first topic about uh, behind the scene uh, engagement. Uh, what is your take on that, for, both from the investor and the company side? Maybe Clemence, you would like to, to start or if you have anything to... Yeah, sure. Um, this is a, a really good question. I think we try to start engagement in pri privately and we will uh, be transparent on engagement uh, when it's finished not to um, uh, like uh, deter the company to answer to us. And if uh, the engagement is not going in the good direction, or if we feel that the company is not responsive, we, we might uh, make the engagement public. Uh, I think we, we would like to, to make more public engagement, uh, even if, it's, uh, if there is no problem with the company, just to make other investors um, look at our points and have a debate, but we have a, a lot of compliance issues on, the, on that. So we prefer to make it private and just publish the result at the end. Okay. Guillaume on the asset management side. Yeah, yeah. this is a really good question because there is a question, there is a link related to our own investors, meaning when we, we are telling them that we are not only uh, allocate capital, uh, but also we are talking to uh, companies. Uh, we, we have to prove that we, we are doing that. And uh, on our side, we don't want to use this dialogue. Uh, we, we, we don't want that uh, the fact that the di dialogue is public put pressure on the corporate. Uh, on, on, the corporate. Uh, on that side, we are maybe not uh, activists because it's very difficult to define the line between activists and people who are just trying to change a bit the strategy of the company just by talking to them. Probably uh, part of the line is uh, the fact that uh, those activists are, are very public on what they are doing. Uh, but, but, but at the end, we, we, we are using the same means. But so, so we, uh, we prefer uh, to be... Um, very transparent on our uh, votes and uh, to be uh, consistent, uh, meaning that we are showing that we are able to, uh, to, to put shareholder resolution on one side and we are able to say no or to, to vote against at the, um, uh, uh, in a, let's say, uh, with the proportion which is acceptable, let's put it that way. And, and this is very, this is very difficult to define, but but that's that's right. That we this is not the way we we we, 
do uh, we are not going public when we talk with companies. This is very, uh, this is, the, I think that this has never happened. Uh, Vincent, would you like to, to uh, react on that? Yes, so for me, to the question of transparency, the, the answer is, is definitely yes, especially, no, no doubt, on, on baseline, so where we, where we play, and the achievement, yearly, uh, yearly achievement. And I think this is really key um, to help, to give transparency, to help understand so that everybody, and especially the shareholders, understand the uh, the challenge made them explicit based on, on scenarios, option, calculation of, of cost on the, on the run. So I think this is very key to, to, the, to have a robust and, and insightful dialogue. Um, so transparency and baseline and achievement, maybe a little bit more latitude uh, to the company, to the path to get there. So I think uh, the, the, the corporate uh, is still in a good position to, to know better um, what type of levers and, and drivers to use to get to the to the path? I would say. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Chef. Uh, Guillaume. You wanted to add something? Yeah, maybe for the second question. Uh, yes, yes, we can we can go ahead with the second question. Yes, yes. Oh, the second question. I think the role of the yeah. activist. Yeah, on the role yeah. of the activist, uh, both for uh, from the point of view of the asset manager and the point of view of the of the firm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, we, if we if if we are not talking about the uh, media strategy, uh, just about the uh, capital allocation and what we want to change, uh, I think that probably the best way to uh, to uh, end the list is to refer to the to the presentation of uh, Gustin. Meaning, what is really your um, objective function? Is it a standard objective function, utility function, trying to maximize uh, the final uh, value of your uh, wealth? Yeah. Uh, or do you have something else? It, it was not clear for me what was something else, the, the A of uh, the, the objective function. But do you put something else on the, on the table uh, when you try to change or to, to adapt, or you, you discuss on the strategy of the company. And, uh, and this is very difficult to assess because this is very clear when you want to try to optimize your uh, utility function of your final wealth. I mean, everybody mm. knows how it works, maybe. Yeah. And we, we had an example recently with Shell, with uh, the hedge fund third point, uh, saying that they have to separate uh, their uh, old uh, business with their new business. And this is at the investor level that you have to decide if you want to use this old business to finance the new one. And this is not, uh, and, and this is uh, the, the message of this activist. And this is not at the company level that they have to decide that. Mm. I think that behind that, the purpose is only uh, um, a monetary purpose. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, but uh, that's true that I would put the, the difference between the two uh, that uh, from a theoretical point of view that, uh, that you have a, a utility or an, an objective function which is not only related to uh, the final value of, uh, of your work. I would put it that way. It's a, I don't know if it's an answer, but uh, at least it's a framework. Okay. Thank you, Guillaume. Uh, Clemence, uh, to stay on the asset management side uh, of, of the of the interplay with activists. Yeah, uh, my personal view is that activists can uh, sometimes raise uh, important issues, uh, and uh, uh, I was just thinking about the environmental uh, issues that uh, are uh, going uh, more um, uh, level in the AGMs uh, last years. And uh, for Shell, it's specific. But if you think about Exxon uh, AGM, where activists uh, successfully uh, uh, named uh, two board members uh, with environmental consideration, I think that could be seen as a success. And uh, it's, it will be, have an impact on the uh, Exxon uh, climate strategy. So sometimes it can, um, it, you know, it's not uh, black or white. OK, thanks, Clemence. Any uh, any insights, uh, Vincent? You would like to to bring? I think uh, I agree with uh, with Clemence and, uh, and Guillaume that it's 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 good to have this like counter power or, or uh, actor to to raise issues. But I think the, the key is of course that for them to to remain consistent from uh, on the stage and, and behind the scene because uh, we have experienced some very you know greenwashing speeches and expectation. We will ask 
our corporate to do this and this. And at the end, we, we, when we have a face-to-face -face with them, but okay, what is the EBDA this year? Yeah, exactly. Full, full, full stop. So I think this is really, uh, it has to be consistent. And uh, going back to my, um, to my first messages, um, I think this is interesting when we have a, a dialogue with, with, um, with everything which is incurred with such type of objectives and, and, and achievements. If we have in front of this um, cost or, or prerequisite to get to them, to, to get to these objectives, uh, then the dialogue is interesting and, and it's good. Uh, and we can accept as a corporate to have this pressure or, or request from the, from the funds. Uh, if every, everybody is aware of uh, what are the consequences of yeah. such uh, choices. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, may I ask maybe the, the final question, because now it's almost, we are almost uh, done, but I, I have a final question regarding the double, the, the double materiality that Natalie mentioned in her uh, presentation, and that was implicitly raised by, by Vincent, the fact that when, when you make engagement on, uh, on, uh, on an environmental or a social issue, uh, you, th th there is both a financial impact, but there's also the societal impact. And, and, and the question, what, what uh, Augustin in his presentation was mentioning is that as an, as an investor, you, you might want to be ready to lose a little bit in order to have incentives to, uh, to lose a little bit in, in, in financial terms in order to, uh, to, to improve uh, societal, uh, societal goals. Or societal outcomes. Uh, to what extent do you feel that this is uh, becoming a little bit acceptable to dis to discuss about this trade-off between uh, between societal impact and and financial impacts? Uh, I, I will say that um, if you are losing a little bit on the financial side, it will be on the short term. But on the long term, you will you will win a lot. So, so that's maybe uh, what an asset manager, which is a long-term investor, uh, should think about uh, when doing this. But uh, maybe Guillaume, yeah. uh, you have a, uh, your own view on that. I don't totally agree on that. Uh, I, I will go one step further, meaning that uh, it's very easy to talk with uh, conf with uh, issuers uh, on the uh, on, on on the materially uh, the, the standard. Uh, materiality side when there is an impact on financial because this is a standard discussion and this is not because it's an extra financial issue that is not it is not uh, assessed with the with the issuers uh, we start to have issues when 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 it's essentially externalities and sometimes some of those externalities could even not have an impact in the long term I like to talk about the uh, territories, for example. This is a case for us. This is not. We cannot say today that uh, uh, that working for uh, proximity uh, uh, to pay your uh, tax uh, where you uh, you earn money, etc. This is uh, very important, even for the long term return. And that, I think that as a responsible investor, sometimes we have to take that cost. Mm. Even if uh, at the end uh, we are not sure that uh, some regulator will put a new tax or something which will uh, say at the end that we were right. Uh, and I think this is, we have the opportunity to go one step uh, uh, ahead on that, on, on that purpose. So that's for sure that when it, at the end, when, when, when there is a, when, when there is an impact on, uh, on financial uh, performance uh, on short and long term, uh, in this case, and for biodiversity, as we know that we that the states will uh, at the end uh, regulate some stuff or put some taxes, uh, even if there is no short term impact, we have to start. But I, I, I would say that if something is very important for you as a company, even if it's that it has only a societal impact, and not a financial one, even on the long term if you have to discuss about that subject. And this is very difficult. The, so the discussion could be very difficult because uh, uh, and sometimes you have, to, you, have, you have to go away. And no big deal. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what I will just add is that what we need to clarify is whether or not the fact that there is an impact on the financials is due to an investment which will have a positive impact 
for the company in the long term. So this is also what we are looking for. And I think that one case which is emblematic We lost, lost Natalie. Natalie. Yeah. We lost Natalie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let, let's see. So maybe I don't know if Clemence or Vincent, you would like to to say a concluding word about this issue, or you want to leave it like that. We are. Uh... No, I think this would be uh, the need of a dedicated session to to see to what <laughs> exactly. conditions, to what conditions shareholders are ready to take. Uh, exactly. Of a cost or, or in engagement with a long term results in mind. Yes. So. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes, you're right. So, sorry, Natalie, we, we lost you, but uh, so it, just in the interest of time, I think we are going to uh, to close the, the round table. Thank you um, uh, very much to uh, the four of you for, for your very interesting uh, insights. It's uh, always uh, great for us researchers to, to learn more about uh, what, uh, what is uh, going on in, in, on the field. Uh, and also, I think we were very lucky to have um, a very um, wide panel of, uh, of practitioners from different, uh, um, from all the, the important, let's say, uh, players in the social responsible investment um, uh, industry, both the asset managers, the, uh, um, uh, the uh, second generation rating and the, uh, and the, and the firms. So I, I thought it was really, really um, uh, useful for us uh, academics. Thank you very much.